So uh, some future things. So this is the last session with the main monitor, I think. And we're ahead of schedule. Cool. Uh, so there, there is a future. Um, so we have a bunch of things experimental, uh, still labeled experimental. And I, I kind of like having the kind of the concept of experimental because it's al it allows us to merge stuff easily and just put it there and we can test it out. I think it, as I mentioned before, I, I believe it's it's sort of a risks and um, all everything that we do experimentally, it risks just sitting there ex as experimental because it, it's actually never shipped to production. People don't actually try it out much. So it, it just ends up, yeah, it's code. We have tests for it. We do CI builds, but eh, how do we ever sort of graduate these features? It, it, we don't really have a clear path forward for, for all of them. Some of them we do, like the hyper. I talked about hyper recently, so let's not really repeat that too much. Uh, but we also have the um, HP3 backends, right? Three of them. Um, they're experimental. We have Russell's, we have WebSocket. What do we need to do to get them moving? We just added ECH. Uh, Maybe we should consider adding some kind of conditions what's required for them to go out of experimental. Maybe that would help um, to at least have a better understanding on wh wh when does it end. And we have new things coming, right? And I, I've, I've brought up this before, and I think this is still a something that lives on in the HTTP group in, I, in the IETF, which is a new method. It, this is basically post. But with another method for a curl, it really means nothing else than a post. But it's without side effects supposed to be, or it's about without side effects. But that's more of a server side thing, right? It yeah. yeah, it's a matter of retry behavior. Or <coughs> yeah, a retry <coughs> behavior could be different. And 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 the the reason I usually bring it up is maybe we want some kind of more native support than just using uppercase X option, right? <laughs> You could do it then just uppercase dash the uppercase x query. That's how you do it now, and it works. But maybe we need uh, more native support. I don't know. I, I just like to bring it up because it's still it's a still a live suggestion. So I think this is going to happen uh, at some point. Uh, th someone brought this up not too long ago, and I think this is an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. um, RFC ninety four twenty one HP message signatures. That this is basically check some a few headers in the request, and uh, uh, if if I would say it's a highly complicated RFC for something that sounds fairly easy. Yeah, I just looked at it. Just the table of contents. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's just super it's complicated. I, I, I figured how <laughs> hard, I figured you would just mention which headers, and then you do a SHA two fifty six or something, and then you would press that on. No. <laughs> it, you, there's basically you can select different algorithms, different ways to do it, and yeah, the, the, the RFC is huge. Oh, they even have downgrades how to handle those. So, so yeah. it, it was sort of yeah. So I was a little bit, uh, <laughs> got a little bit <laughs> terrified when I checked, it, but it, because it seems we already supported this AWS Sig V4, mm -hmm. which is basically the precursor to this, which is an AWS invention, right? People are reusing it for other sites as well, and we support it, and it's roughly the same way and this is the follow-up done by by the standardization standardization people in a more uh, friendly way among many other players than amazon and those who have just copied amazon's way so it, theoretically this is the, the proper way and i what i'm hearing is that some people are actually switching from the sig v4 to this one uh, but then people have also mentioned to me that there are also implementations like uh, it's apparently common this thing in ActivityPub, like from Mastodon and Fediverse. Mm, but yeah. someone told me then that they're also not spec compliant. So I'm not sure where that ends up in like, maybe <laughs> they don't even, but, but uh, uh, that's just hearsay, I don't know. But anyway, th so there seems to be some interest at least uh, and some adoption somewhere. And it seems to be sufficiently complicated that it's, it's going to be hard for people to implement it at sort of on top of curl by themselves, right? And there will not be a lot of p 
people just, oh, well, I'll just pass along a set of custom headers to curl and, and it'll work because this is complicated. So not that many people want to implement this. So it makes sense maybe to, for curl to do. I know the, the ECH crowd, I think they're two. <laughs> Steven and Naya. Uh, they have more ideas about how to uh, polish more things around ECH. And uh, related to that is, for example, the HPS DNS records. And we can use HPS DNS records for more stuff than just ECH. In particular, it's a good sign for uh, knowing if, a, if we should try HP3, for example, for a particular host. And there are a few other things we can do with DNS or DNS records we could potentially fetch if we if we want to. I, I mean, it adds an interesting challenge to 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 get other DNS records when we use get host uh, get other info because that's a libc host uh, libc function, right? And uh, it does more than just DNS. Should we add support for another resolver on the side and get the host? or get other DNS records on the side. I guess we have to do that if we want to support get other info. But it, I think there are some interesting challenges and it's certainly a new way for us to, we have never built with C Ares and using get addresses at the same time. We need to you know, do a name resolves uh, in parallel, two at the same time, or more than two at the same time. So there's there is some fun uh, internal gymnastics uh, exercises to, to be done if we want to do this. And I think we want to do this. Uh, in particular, also for ECH, because um, if we want to do ECH for other, pro without relying on Do for name resolver, which, I mean, Do is fun, but I guess it's a very small subset of users who are actually using Do for name resolver. So and I think more, more than Do users will want to use ECH. And uh, uh, I had this also mentioned, which is with what Christian mentioned. Network. Uh, you have to love the Apple naming of things, right? Secure transport, that's a TLS library. And the network framework. The network framework is a, is a framework for network. Yeah, sure. But <laughs> <laughs> so that's apparently the name of it. And, and we uh, potentially, we, we could use that for TLS on, on Apple devices. Uh, as Christian uh, showed, it's a very high level API mm -hmm. and it's unclear if we can even get a socket out of it. Mm -hmm. So can we? Can it even be used? It feels like shoehorning into something that maybe it will be very complicated and yeah, we have to create our own socket and wrap it around something. And as he mentioned, threads and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, that sounds, oh, <laughs> ah. So, may, yeah, the, the question mark uh, might be for different sizes on these different things, but um, these are just things that I'm sort of popped into my mind when I was supposed to write this slide. Uh, I'm not married to any one of these in particular, but I think they are all interesting. And they all have, you, uh, I mean, people are going to want all of these in different camps. I mean, the, the um, as Christian Bechter has mentioned, the secure transport is a popular TLS backend among Apple people. People building curl for Apple devices because it allows them to not use a, a third party dependency. But secure transport is deprecated and doesn't support 1.3 and everything. So and we've had requests for network framework support on the disk. Yes. So there's been a couple of people. Yeah, it's been a couple and it, it's being sort of regularly brought up again. When will we do? When will we implement support for this? Yeah. And usually, that's also a way for us to fish for someone to say, "Sure, we want to pay someone to do it," but it, ha it hasn't happened yet. And even if someone would say, "What would would you charge me f to implement support for network framework?" I, I would still feel icky about it, <laughs> so I'm not sure. Maybe it, it will mean that we eventually just don't have any native TLS library on. on I'm not sure if, if anyone would be sad about that or not. Uh, <coughs> I also just wanted to mention that because w often when I show this, uh, 
brought about a number of options, people sort of responded, respond and say that I shouldn't be happy about the number of options we have in Curl because number of options is certainly not a good thing. Uh, it's just, you know, we just get lost in the woods among all the options. I guess, I, I think very few of us even know 90% of the options or 70% of the options. I think even I sometimes get confused what options we have and what we actually do. Um, and we also have to, of course, remain keeping things secure um, by default at least. So we have a, a bunch of things um, mentioned already in, in the deprecate list. And this is one of these minor things that I've sort of just been harping and repeating because there was this effort a while ago, someone mentioned how many different ways, different tools and libraries parse this no proxy option. It's, it's more or less a standard environment variable, but everyone treats it differently. And curl, of course, also treats it differently than everyone else. But um, <laughs> so I wanted to just go take a small, small step towards being more in line with the others. And that means not just con using spaces as separations, but requiring a comma. So that's why I've just mentioned this a while, because I w since when, I'm, when I do this, it's going to break something, but it's going to make it more standardized with others. Since it's a common environment variable, it would make sense if more tools used it the same way. <coughs> and we could also mention what other, what, what more to deprecate, right? Uh, I've, I've had uh, this, I asked it on the mailing list a while ago, and uh, I, I do, I, I still think this is a good idea, or rather, maybe raise the bar a little bit more for, keep raising the bar for TLS libraries that we support. We dropped NSS and GSKit basically for reasons, right? They're hard to maintain and keep supporting. Maybe we should just say, if you want to build curl, we, 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 we want to make sure that we raise the bar for, for participating TLS libraries. We support so many anyway. Do we really need to keep support for those, with, for, for example, without support for TLS 1.3? These days, I mean, it's not, you can survive with 1.2 almost always. So it's not sort of a strict function, but it's also a sign of, if you don't have 1.3 support now, what, what kind of library is that? Do we, do we need to support that? Uh, and and um, right now then that's secure transport, that's bare SSL and it is embed TLS. And uh, when Andrew brought this up, uh, it, sort of triggered the exact response that I wanted, especially from the, M the TLS people, because then they said, suddenly say, well, embed TLS supports 1.3. That shouldn't be included here, but yes, the library might support it, but we don't support it, right? So someone needs to do the job to make sure that we can work with embed TLS and 1.3. And that still hasn't happened. I, there, I think there are signs that it might happen and, and it's still, and I, I think that's fine. I did that might just show that it works for us. If we just raise the bar a little bit, make sure that everyone can jump over the bar at this level, and that's fine. Everyone who can participate can follow along. And maybe we don't need to bring the other ones along. I, culling the list of supported TLS libraries might just be good for us and good for users so that we can, and it also help the mess, helps us with the message, right? Then curl, we, we know that curl would always support blah, 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 mm -hmm. TLS 1.3. It could be sort of easier to say that we always support this because. Uh, and another thing that also reminded me, because I, I noticed a commit message from Stefan the other day that some of these TLS libraries, they don't even support IP addresses in server certificates. And it gets me so annoyed. And that's also sort of, should we really drag along libraries that don't even bother to work with that? And I mean, th then you can't really work uh, live on the internet without that. So it's a sort of a niche. Mm. Not, uh, I'm not impressed. Um, and uh, also sort of the question, do we need four quick and to be three backends? Maybe they are not such a burden. Maybe it's fine, but I think it's something to Again, maybe we should just require something out of the backends. We say that to be a, a quick backend in curl, you need A, B, and C. And if you don't have that uh, by the spring 2025, you're out. I mean, it, it's not going <laughs> to hurt a lot of users. It's pro probably just going to save us from code.
What about um, platform support? Where we have no idea if it works and probably doesn't. Like Irix. I mean, I'm coming from Irix myself. I'm pretty sure we're not going to compile it. But we still yeah. test if we have the Mixpro compiler. That's right, but we have uh, but platform support. Um, that's usually not something we care much about, right? So it's more of an accidental if we support it or not. So right. we don't we don't bend over particularly to support IRIX or HPUX. No, the question is should we even keep the mix pro check in com out of comp because no one's realistically ever going to make it work on mix pro again. No, no, you're right. But on on the other hand, it's really not a burden, is it? I mean, not really, no. maybe it's a configure. I mean, something somewhere in a configure check, but no one has touched that in a while. Maybe it could just live there. But but you're right. Maybe we could look if there's if there's anything that is there and that is slow or or sort of uh, in the way. We can certainly discuss just removing it if if we don't believe anyone is using it. Otherwise, I think platform support in general tends to just you know get dusty in the corner. No one is looking in the corner, so we just don't care about it. Really. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, those things are rarely a burden to us. They're just somewhere in there in the closet and nobody opened the closet for, for three years. And that's always a question with your esoteric platform support. Yes. Do you have a few if if they're somewhere they aren't in the way Right. A and right. Uh, uh, and, and uh, over time you don't it's know it's more if costly to remove them and test that it that it still works. Yeah, uh, I'm just thinking of stuff like autocon like every test every time we test in CE we need to build the stuff and then every time we build the stuff we need to test if the mix for compiler is there, which we never mm -hmm. test And then over the course of testing over years like we're gonna spend a significant amount of time testing for compiler we know no, we yeah. no longer exist. Right. Per per run it's not much, it's a fraction. Uh, but it's but no, it's definitely not a okay point for and and it's also it's hard for us right to know if someone is using it, and we have such an extreme upgrade cycle time sometimes. So, I mean, we've seen it in the past when we remove something, then seven years later, someone oh, did you remove it? <laughs> <laughs> yep, because that's the only way to know. Remove it and see what. It happens. is the only way to really figure out if it's used, but it takes forever to really know, right? I so know. <laughs> so how do you actually really know? You don't really know because until someone has been shouting, but if no one's shouting, you, you can don't only know. know in retrospect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Possibly, right? If someone shouts, otherwise you don't know. Maybe they just haven't shouted yet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's. Uh, it's um, Keeps life interesting. It's <laughs> interesting. <laughs> But but I but I I, I don't feel that we have platform support that uh, is particularly heavy to carry. If if there's any platform support that is heavy, that's always Windows. Yeah. But but I don't think good. Windows is uh, getting close to getting <laughs> ripped out. <coughs> but Windows support is always the most the most difficult, most challenging, and different than uh, mm. everything else. I know another operating system too, but it's not being run as often, I guess. Right. Uh, yeah, there I are of course. VMS is there are of course complicated. Usually, v VMS complex. is really complicated. Yeah. Uh, but I think that's such a rare thing, and those who use it are rare. <laughs> I mean, they're accustomed to these things. So I, I am, yeah, I agree. VMS is possibly even more complicated, but it's it's not a big platform for us. I don't think. I don't even know if curl is still working perfectly. Oh yeah, it is. It is, yeah. Uh, VSI are uh, have a, a ah, right. an installation package for it. So definitely. Yeah. But uh, but if we're sort of looking at what platform is causing us the most grief and, and yeah, yeah, most Windows work, usually exactly. is so much Windows more. is a disproportionate yeah, yeah. amount of work to get yeah. going. But well, maybe not disproportionate, maybe it is proportional to the amount of users because mm. there's a potential of very, very many users on Windows. And a pic uh, in particular since uh, Curl is on Windows 10 and 11 nowadays. So I guess quite a lot of Windows users could, uh, could exist in, on Windows, uh, Curl users on Windows. <coughs> and then I wanted to bring up the, the, uh, the constant question that I get about getting uh, the things that are Curl branded. Um, <coughs> sometimes I'm, I 
toy with the idea, and I've I even talked to people about actually making something that is would be an official store branded things to buy curl stickers or curl t-shirts. It has never happened. I talked to someone just recently, actually, just a few months ago, yeah. but it hasn't happened. So I just brought it up because I get a lot of questions. Especially every time I talk about curl stickers, someone asks me, "Why do I buy these? You don't buy them." <coughs> but it's also a lot of work to get it do done and uh, it's not a lot of money to be had to sell anything so I, I figure it's just more work than potential money in the end so I never really bothered I just wanted to bring this up because I get asked so much uh, so the, the conclusion is um, uh, we have stuff to do there are potentially new things to do we have deprecation going forward so I'm certainly keen to, to hear from you if you have other things you think we should do or should not do or deprecate or add or whatever. Any proposals for fun, fun things to do? Windows mm -hmm. XP support? Deprecate. Windows XP. Yeah, do we, but <coughs> do, do we uh, have a lot of sort of burden with XP? Do we have if that's Not much, but just a few. Just, just a few. Usual. Yeah. Mm. We could, I mean, we will have the. Uh, User survey coming up so yeah, so so it we, it, we could ask asking for window used Windows versions that's always fun and I always suspect that we don't actually get quite the truth from users either so it's, it's a tricky thing to yeah, ask users and not prove that they're using the, that they just ask them which Windows versions do you run curl on because people say very very old Windows versions and it all may <laughs> always makes me wonder is, is that true or do they just mention the oldest one they can think of because as i recall it last year quite a few said with windows xp oh yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. <coughs> there are still xp installation <coughs> running a little here and there uh, yeah exactly i go cringe every time i see it but but then of course you can maybe just also consider maybe it doesn't matter maybe those who use curl on windows xp can just be happy with what we shipped because they probably don't run the latest one anyway so maybe in three years when they want to upgrade and they realize we've dropped it maybe that is fine i don't know mm -hmm. i mean we we have no responsibility in, in that regard we can do what we want <coughs> i would like in the near future to make new tls feature wise more on par yeah with that's OpenSR. that's a good a good point i wanted to show show this um, yeah, this, this exactly the back TLS. I was looking for it and couldn't find it. The, is it the page compari comparing the? Yes. So where did I put that thing? I couldn't find it. I looked at the commit log for the website and found the link that was. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> I yeah. 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 Ah, that's the one we didn't find. So, so this is this is a list of libcurl setup options and the different TLS libraries and a green checkbox for the backends that don't support the option and the red thing if they don't support the option. So, quite a few options <laughs> and a little bit scattered over there which backend supports which feature and then there's a summary in the bottom so we can see that Maybe one feature the, the, the open SSL one. one yes 71 I, I think yeah. out of 72 uh, yeah the open four start is is not supported apparently uh, uh, apparently exactly it's supported by one and I that's <laughs> I pretty yeah, sure that's yeah I think it was more than one when we uh, removed <coughs> the test, but it's just basically the guy who implemented it used it for something. Mm. Yeah, it's such an old legacy feature at all. I don't think anyone really cares about the, the, the false start. If someone cares, it's, it's an opportunity to fill in more blanks. But in general, uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's what uh, Stefan was talking about. So GNU TLS, for example, is then the, the second one from, mm. from the left, and that's at 45 out of 72. Yeah, there's a bunch of gaps. And in, in general, all of these gaps are uh, potential uh, ex 
things for us to add to it. If we say that we remove support for libraries without uh, 1.3 support, then of course we can remove two columns from this or three. So that would be less, okay. fewer gaps to fill in. This looks great. Um, it seems like something hard to maintain. Is it automatically generated somehow? Or yes. This okay. is this is. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't have done this otherwise because uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically I I sort of got the question right. I, someone was basically asking for this information, and yeah, the, my first response was more like, "No, that's crazy. We don't have that data. I can't <laughs> I can't provide that because I." It's just embedded in code. But then it struck me that it should be available. And, and so I've, I've, I went through all the, all the options for TLS. And then I went through the documentation and the code and have provided. So now all the man pages for, for all these options, they actually have embedded in the metadata exactly for which backend they were. So they, it's nice. in the documentation metadata. Yeah. I mean, it could be wrong there. But it's it's in there at least, so you can see it when you load the, the markdown for okay. that option. You will see that it's list. It says option for TLS and for these particular backends. Okay. So that also, if you for example go to this option, the, that's uh, that's also how um, it gets. Uh, where is it? So the, it says here protocols, and it lists the backends here. So that's also generated from that metadata in, into plain English, so it's also oh. visible like this. Uh, oh, and uh, where is the original metadata? Is it in the document? In the markdown yeah. for, yeah. for the markdown okay. file for that option. Yeah. So whenever something changed, the, the markdown needs to be updated, so you update one page and... Uh, e exactly. Uh, and typically, since you see it here in, in, in English, a, a, a normal author that if you do a PR and change the status, you would typically understand and, and you want to fix this. So yeah, I think I think it will it work. I mean, there will be mistakes, of course, but yeah. And and that web page I show you, it'll be it's generated exactly like the rest of the web page. So if we update this, the table will be updated on the website. Nice. So for Blue TLS, probably the, the CA cache timeout, we currently do not cache this for Blue TLS. I think that, uh, that is one feature, for yeah. example, I think we Which should... Which is significant for users. Yeah, it is significant. It's going to be really significant for some users. So yeah. I think that is one we really want yeah. more green check boxes. Some of the others might be less important. Well, some of them are also open source specific. So yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so set, set the engine, for example. Exactly. Yeah. So, so it's, it's a little bit of a, uh, yeah. Yeah. I say 72. May, I mean, you can't mm -hmm. reach 72 for all of them. So that's yeah. it's a little bit of a. Yeah. Some of them will just have to be remain mm -hmm. red, and that's fine. Very also very sort of random. You have some blob options are supported by several backends, and other blob options are not. Blob yeah. options being providing them in memory instead of from from the file. Interesting. <laughs> and <laughs> and so uh, the blob options are something. Is it something that shows up on the CLI or is it? No. Also that? Uh, no, that's a lib curl. Yeah. That's just basically a lot of embedded use cases when you don't want to read things from files. You want to provide it in memory buffers yeah. instead of fi files. Right. But all of the CLI options will be represented here as well. This well, no, these are just the library options. So so the C so I mean indirectly indirectly I can Yes, uh, like a bunch of them have a sort of a one-to-one -one mapping to a right. command line option, but not all of them. Okay. So it's not, it's, it's not always crystal clear mm -hmm. <laughs> if, if they actually relate to a command line option or not. But sort of, uh, sure, if you 
verify result. Yeah, that's that's. Um, is that a command and option? It is. It is, and yeah, you get that information or not. I'm, I, I'll try to find out in the, the workspace. So, yeah. I'll, I'll reach out on the mailing list. Yeah, I'll absolutely, know. exactly. So, so it is. I mean, it's quite possible to. I guess. We could work on it and make it roughly the same thing for the command line options. Meta okay. info. You could in the command line option do the meta which lib curl options are necessary for this. So then you could. Yeah, so then we could indirectly find. Yeah, yeah. that could be one way to do it. So I'm certainly always in favor of adding more more of that kind of yeah. metadata and automatic ways to figure out more more ways what what works where and how. And that's also, uh, I think, another benefit with, with switching to this, um, the new markdown format for these documentations. I mean, it's much easier now to add the metadata and have a management around it, I think. <coughs> and that is it for me for now. Um, we actually don't have any more presentations with the name on it. <coughs> so I'm not sure exactly how to, um, there's coffee in 20 minutes, and then we have this using OpenSSL for HTTP3, which the, that topic, um, yeah, maybe, maybe we should just stop the recording. Um, <coughs>